this is the rather strange and ungainly style of Sergei Gonchar. Fastest man at 16 kilometers. Fastest man at 36 kilometers. Now at 15 kilometers to go. This is Patrick Sinkiewicz. He is not going to dethrone Sebastian Lang either because he's outside of that time. But as a good climber, he'll be fairly happy with a performance like this. I tell you what, T-Mobile are having a wonderful day here on the Tour de France. They're riding, all the men are coming in well with time trial performances. Back out on course, Paolo Savadelli of the Discovery Channel team here. He's also doing a very respectable ride up amongst the leaders. Uh, advantage to Savadelli in the mountains, of course. Uh, Honshaw, he can climb, given the chance, but he's not a, a climber of pure ability in the mountains. Savadelli now, he comes up, and he's looking very, very confident and very good. Now, Floyd Landy still sits on second place after the second check, where there are still seven riders to come to. This is the rider who is scorching the road just now, and, oh, sure, he's suffering, but, boy, he is getting the time out of that body. This is a wonderful ride by the former world champion, Sergei Honchar. Everybody is suffering in this time trial here this afternoon, Phil. It is a very difficult individual time trial, and if you don't judge it to perfection, you can blow 20 or 30 seconds in the last 10 kilometers of this race. We're now coming into the outskirts of Rennes. The man who was second at that second time check there was, of course, Floyd Landis. Landis, I think, will be a little bit surprised to see the times being being produced here by Gonchar, who goes underneath the ring road around Wren. But his position, it is the weirdest position in the world. It really does not look comfortable at all compared to the position here of Floyd Landis, who still looks very much rock solid on his machine. Well, Landis is riding superbly at the moment, best of all the Americans. There was thought the Americans would ride very well, but they've had bad luck throughout. Even Floyd Landis has changed his bike at the moment. This is Hincapie now coming to L'Hermitage. George Hincapie pumping out at 36 and a half kilometers. This is where Honchar set that remarkable time. Hincapie nowhere near that, of course, but there's a long way to go in the Tour de France. All he's thinking about is limiting his time losses. Not so much to Sergei Honchar, but he will worry about the time of Floyd Landis. So as they continue, 45, 37 to go. Grabs 45, 43, and outside the top 21. Well, I think it's a long way around these bends to go through the S's now to the banner. And Hincapie, there's Bradley Wiggins still sitting there, but he's just inside the top 25 now, Wiggins, as these big riders start to arrive home. Look at that time by Honcho, and George is losing over two minutes to him now. Losing a couple of minutes, Hincapie, at that point, the face of uh, pain all over his face as he comes up to this line. Hincapi will, I think, be a little bit shocked as well. So many riders at the start of this individual time trial had the belief, Phil, that they could take the overall lead here this afternoon, and they're all getting a little bit of a reality check. Well, this is a local boy here, Benoit Vonrenar. He comes home, and a big cheer from the crowd. Big effort, too. 48th place for him on the Francaise des Jeux, uh, Jeux, des Jeux team. As we look down here, still at the laborious style of Sergei Honchar, but it certainly rides to good effect. Look at that check of 46 kilometers now. Honchar is 1.12 ahead of Lang, who is still the leader in the finish and has been for most of the day. 55 minutes and 9 seconds is a massive beating of everybody else. A minute and 12 seconds faster than Sebastian Lang, and he really is doing a great performance. His teammate who's behind him is 14th at the moment. This is David Miller. He's going to cross the line, I think, Phil, inside the top 30. For him, it's still going to be a long battle back to the top. Not surprising. Two years out of competition, you can't really come back and expect to slot in at the top end of the sport. No, but he's riding a very clever Tour de France here, showing no signs of weakness. Uh, 28th place at the moment. He'll drop out of the top 30 before the end of the day. Christophe Moreau now. And Christophe Moreau started behind Miller and he's finishing right up behind him. So Moreau has really done a great ride here today because he's judged himself on Miller's performance. He knows Miller's ability and he's not too far off having caught David Miller today. Christophe Moreau will be very, very pleased with this ride. He's right up amongst the leaders as he races to the line. Ninth place. He's a Tender. And this is Michael Rogers, and he's riding solidly. He's moved up oh, a fraction, but it's a long way from this corner to the, pl the point where the clock stops. It is a long way. It's through the S's here, so it's, it's not going to be a third place at the moment. He'll be slower than Menchov. 
but as long as he keeps progressing the other boys have been slowing down with the one notable exception of uh, Sergei Honchar and indeed Floyd Landis is hanging on in there very very well this is the world time trial champion Michael Rogers who has been uh, kept his form a little bit lower this year last year he was a challenger in the uh, Tour de Switzerland before this race began this year he rode a quieter Tour de Suisse in the hope it all come good here now Cadell Evans arriving at the finish at the checks he was in ninth place of those who've gone before him just a few kilometers back a big effort now from a Cadell Evans as he races up to the line he'll probably finish somewhere around the ninth place well just got inside of that actually eighth place 45 seconds lost by Cadell Evans I think he'll be fairly satisfied with that because a lot of the riders finishing in front of him are riders who are much better at the individual time trial than actually mountain climbers so now back with Michael Rogers seventh place at the second time check a minute and 16 seconds down but he is starting to improve he's looking further up the road there to see if he can just see the performances being done by Sergei Oncha he is a minute and 12 seconds faster than the second place rider of the third the 46 kilometer check that is an incredible performance by Honcha as we go back to Floyd Landis who must surely be not too far away now Phil from that third check of the day because Vladimir Karpic has just gone through with the 11th best time well Vladimir Karpic has gone through Landis started two minutes behind him he must be closing in on Karpic so, but he must have got the best part of a minute out of him now whether he can see him or not we just simply don't know this is the battle of T-Mobile uh, Matthias Kessler at the back uh, just hanging on to the other rider at the front which is the big time trial leader at the moment Honshaw who is now in the streets of Rennes here approaching the line and for the first time for a long long time today there's going to be a new leader's time on the board and it's going to take some beating in fact I'd go so far to say the only man remotely having a chance of beating it now is Floyd Landis well, Floyd Landis, if he can recover over the second half of this course now, here he is. This is the time to beat Sebastian Lang, and an hour and two minutes, 47 seconds. Sergei Honcha, formerly the world time trial champion, takes that corner. Going to take him about 25 or 30 seconds to get to the line, but he's got plenty of time in hand. This man has won five time trial stages of the Tour of Italy. He's led the Tour of Italy. He's never won a time trial of the Tour de France. He's never led the Tour de France, and both could be the occasion today. Honcha races up to the line now is 61 minutes and plenty of time he can cruise home now Sebastian Lang can take time out he won't be on the winners podium today as the former world champion races up the home so he can see the clock he knows every second counts the seconds count as to whether he will leave this race tonight he comes in and the crowd give him a cheer 1-1-43 one, one, best time by an awful long way best time by a minute and four seconds here are the two big sprinters at the back end of the race these are the last two men to start they've had a great time over the first week robin McEwen getting three wins tom bonan not getting a win but being consistent and wearing the yellow jersey at the end of the day phil they've animated the first week of racing now what they've got to do is try and survive once we get down to the mountains well as long as they pass wide and pass and repass uh, the referees probably won't say anything but they must be very careful here that they don't invoke the wrath of the referees and they get done for pacing uh, it'll only be a few seconds though and i don't suppose either of them will worry too much about that i doubt if these two riders are too worried about time at all there floyd land is just going through that third time check still in second place but 57 seconds in arrears 57 seconds behind sergei honchar and he's not closing in on the rider from ukraine at all so i think Logically, Sergei Honcha is going to be the new leader of the Tour de France at the end of the afternoon, and he's going to get himself his first ever stage victory in the Tour. Big long straights there for Floyd Landis, who had so many hopes and dreams at the start of the afternoon that he was going to be the new leader. So, just going back now down to uh, George Hincapi, a little bit further back. Hincapi will be one of the next riders to get to that time check he started off very sensibly but lost himself around about two minutes at the second time check and here are the two sprinters at the back of the race the last two riders to start tom boonen and robbie McEwen. boonen in the yellow McEwen in the green but for McEwen, he's a solid leader of that points classification a competition that he's won on two occasions in the past hi i'm cadet 11 watching the tour on itv Thank you.
Carpets. This is Carpets now swinging in. Another mark of force, which means that just behind Carpets will, uh, I think it's um, it's Cadell Evans who won't be too. No, it's Landis, in, isn't it? Sorry, it's Landis. Of course it is. Landis who'll come in next. Tenth place for Carpets. He's destined for yet another good finish in a Tour de France. And here comes Landis, and he's not too far behind Carpets either. So it's been a very, very good ride. Remember, he's had a flat tie. He certainly had the bicycle change. That story will unfold later. But right now, he never let it phase him at all because he is best of the rest today. This has been an extraordinarily good ride by Floyd Landis, while most of the Americans seem to have slipped away today in some way or another. Landis coming up. Lang is the time he's aiming at. He should beat that as he raises up. Gonna have to be quick, otherwise he'll be slotting behind. But he comes up to the line as he hits the no. He's not going to make. Yes, he is. Second place to Floyd Landis, but exactly a minute. Probably rounded up, it'll be 61 seconds slower than Sergei Honchar. Honchar will now win the time trial today, his first ever victory on a time trial or any stage of the Tour de France. And I think, Paul, he'll get the yellow jersey as well. Well, Honchar started the day in 10th place in the overall classification, and he really put in a storming performance. He's done something, I think, to remount the morale of the T-Mobile squad, who were really in the ducks with the withdrawal of Jan Ulrich within 24 hours of the start of the race this year because of his alleged involvement in that doping scandal. This is Tom Boonen, the man who started the day in the yellow jersey, sprinting away here from Robbie McEwen. Yeah. And they're looking at around about 15 kilometers to go, oh, 10, 10 kilometers to yeah. go to the finish. So, Paolo Sabadelli, this is a rider who will possibly mix it for Team Discovery once they go into the mountains. This is a good ride for him. It's kept him right up amongst the leaders. There'll be no disappointment for this ride by Sabadelli. Delhi. He is a good time trialist, but he's an even better climber, and he's not conceding too much. He knows all about Sergei Gonchar. He's gone shoulder to shoulder with him, and he beat him in the Tour of Italy. So he won't be too worried. He would have expected maybe a great ride by Gonchar today. Savadelli climbs that little bit better. Well, it's been a long ride for him, and it's been a tough day today. There have been so many surprises. Mazzolini is still a big shock to us, as he's got a high finish today as well. Well, it's an up-and-down day for many of the big contenders. A lot of of riders came into this first rendezvous at the Tour de France with high hopes of moving themselves up to the top of the classification, but certainly it has been an upside-down tale for many riders, including <laughs> Levi Leipheimer, who right now must be wondering what has happened to him. We have no information coming through to us on the computer here at the finishing line as to what happened to Levi Leipheimer, but maybe he just cracked up with the nerves. You see, this is the arrival now of George Hincapi. Again, a solid ride, which will just keep him up there. That's all he's looking for. He would have like to have won the time trial but look at this another man that hasn't been able to deliver the goods today this is a very strange race well the gap tonight there won't be seconds there'll be minutes right down the leaderboard because the ride by Honchar they'll just rely very heavily on the fact he is not a brilliant high mountain climber and it'll take a while to claw him back uh, down to the Pyrenees mid next week and then the following week of course we're in the Alps this is a very tough race now and George Hincapi has just done enough to keep himself in touch and just in sight of a yellow jersey. Well, Rogers has passed Oscar Freire. Hincapi is in. He never caught George for four minutes. And uh, now Hushoff being caught here for six minutes out of the start house. Well, he looks good. His body looks as if it's telling him that there's plenty of engine room power still there for Michael Rogers. He comes up to the banner indicating a thousand meters to go. So he is out on course looking to try and get himself a top three position in the overall classification because he's not going to rattle the cage of Sergei Gonchar here this afternoon because the man from Ukraine has done the performance of the day. Well, Tor Hushoft will just uh, concentrate on winning stages this race goes on because he can ride a good time trial. He was the under-23 world champion a few years ago. He showed us in the prologue in Strasbourg he can win too, which he did there. But that was only seven kilometers. This one is 52 kilometers. Now the arrival of the world champion. Tell by his face it's been a hard day out there today for just about every one of the 170 riders. Anyway, we're looking now at the arrival of the world champion here. This is Larson he's aiming at. He might just slip inside Larson. He was up on him at the last check by just four seconds as he held it as he races for that fourth place. He's just about going to scrape in, so he's kept his advantage over the time trial champion of Sweden, and he comes home. The world champion is fourth today, and no yellow jersey.
Well, behind Rogers, the private battle between Tom Burnham and Robbie McEwen to get round inside the time limit using the minimum of energy it was won by McEwen, who started before Burnham and finished behind him. There's the result, Sergei Honchar by 61 seconds from Floyd Landis, with Sebastian Lang another three seconds behind him.